the topic I am going to talk about is, is uh, severe community acquired pneumonia in low and middle income uh, countries. And uh, why I chose the topic, it would just be uh, highlighted that why it's important for us. Uh, although it's an industrial uh, symposia sponsored by Abbott, but my pockets are empty. So I have uh, received no honorarium or any support from them. Now, community cord pneumonia remains a liquid leading cause of hospitalization and mortality and uh, a lot of health care cost. It's eighth leading cause of death among and first among the infectious cause of the death. The early diagnosis and decision where the patient should be looked after and appropriate level of care, that makes a lot of difference and improving the outcomes. Uh, last two years or have been, our main focus has been COVID or so, right? And if you look at the, the front row in 2019, pneumonia remained the towering uh, cause of uh, death and morbidity mortality. In 2021 and 22, the main uh, culprit had been uh, COVID, but come 23, and we again are having maybe we are more focused and more of the people of pneumonia died of COVID. So that's why probably we had a lower mortality, but that's what the figure says. But we turn to severe community acquired pneumonia. It's a life threatening uh, form of community acquired pneumonia, uh, which requires an intensive care setup or admission to hospital, and it does have a heart mortality. The overall world over mortality as a result of uh, community, severe community card pneumonia is about 23%. But the mortality rate in uh, lower and middle income countries like us is as high as 40%. And uh, compared to 10% in the advanced uh, countries, 40% and overall it turns out to 20 so. And there is substantial burden of disease is on the productive years. We have more of either children or elderly dying of this disease in the advanced world, but in the middle, lower middle country, the people of middle age group, of earning age group, they are, and the working age group, they are being sent. This uh, tells us this, the darker the area is, higher the mortality is. So most, most of the mortality in adults is the, in the southern part of the hemisphere, and more in the, uh, what we call it, all the low and middle income countries. And when it comes down to the children, it's further, Pakistan still has you say, quite darker uh, representation in that. There are, this is 2019, as I said, uh, till 2019 we are focusing on data, but then COVID came and all our, uh, say, energies or our uh, things were moved towards COVID and we lost. So the last uh, data we had is it led down to 2.5 million deaths over all over. Majority of these deaths still occur in pediatric age group under the age of five years. And it's said that every 30 seconds a child dies of pneumonia. Coming on to the other side or the larger side of the adults, again, the children and then come the adults and then the elderly population. So the two extremes, one is the very uh, small children and then the elderly population that suffers from that. Over the last 20 years, if you see on the left side of the screen, there has been a substantial decrease in mortality as related to the children. But if you look onto the upper uh, line, it still says that the mortality has reduced, but it's still high. And if you go onto the left side, look at the proportion of uh, deaths in the 90s, majority were the children, and the children mortality has substantially decreased thanks to um, vaccination, which is uh, practiced now. And the mortality in the ad adult or elderly population has decreased, but still is quite high. Now, what is distinctive characteristic of community card pneumonia in low and middle income countries like us? One, resource limitation. We have poor resources because, as I said, this type of uh, pneumonia has to be 
uh, requires a management in a high uh, intensive care setup though that we most of the nations can't afford on a mass scale malnutrition and poor sanitation contributes to the severity of the pneumonia and uh, of course limited access to the health care and the severity assessment tools as we know uh, the CURB 65 or uh, pneumonia severity index they have been designed for western population or there so whether they are rightly applied for our population as well or not that needs to be looked into or questioned this is a, a one of Pakistani studies the contributory factor in elderly patient and risk factors for pneumonia still look at it this particular matter uh, pollution remains the top smoking on number two no access to hand washing facility that is again one of the contributory factor for propagation permanent and then of course we still have a lot of uh, second hand smoke because uh, we not have not yet developed culture of smoking in a cabins or no smoking in a park, uh, public places so that remains the contributory factor when it comes on to initial assessment of a community acquired pneumonia to first we have to confirm the diagnosis whether it is pneumonia or as bronchitis or whatever then we have to assess the severity and then we have to identify the casual pathogen as regard the diagnosis we didn't talk to the physical signs such as dullness percussion bronchial breath sounds crackles wheezing they are helpful but not very specific right when you the the, the gold standard still called as chest x-ray pa and lateral view have a inconsistent inter-observer agreement but remains an indispensable modality for diagnosing community acquired pneumonia owing to its its cost effective right now the ct scan fortunately again covid made us uh, rely on um, uh, ct scan more and more hrct and it's uh, fortunately its availability in countries like us also improved now we have more or uh, say centers doing it so it uh, demonstrated promising outcomes in the diagnosis and management resulting in more tailored patient care but this this modality thoracic ultrasound point of the care ultrasound we have so much improvement in uh, ultrasound machines and all that that this is becoming more and more of an uh, uh, tool to diagnose uh, pneumonias in the emergency rooms and uh, of course uh, with time so in resource limited countries uh, point of the care uh, diagnosis it probably would surpass uh, chest x-rays and hrct in an initial diagnosis the next uh, after the making a diagnosis or confirming uh, this, this making it a physical diagnosis the community acquired pneumonia we are all familiar with the severity index we divide them into either we use a curb 65 scoring or pneumonia severity index both have some similarities but uh, curb uh, 65 is relatively easier to uh, use and does not require much of investigation i will just compare them so divide them into a low risk patient and uh, these with the, their uh, curb score is between 0 to 1 they can be managed at outpatient and of course uh, monotherapy as antibiotic is recommended those who are at moderate risk uh, they may require an inpatient care but they do not require an icu care for them the microbiological diagnosis has to be made and the choice of antibiotic has to be according to the either on empirical basis we'll be discussing in a moment or maybe based on culture but still five or four five uh, days it takes to uh, the culture reports to come we still have to make an empirical diagnosis but the high risk patient of course they would require an inpatient care in an intensive care they would require a microbiological diagnosis and of course we have to rely on combination antibiotics rather than a single antibiotic that's what we'll be talking about what suits the this as i said pneumonia severity index is a rather long list of things which we 
probably low middle income countries cannot afford in the emergency room or in, in as an outpatient and uh, again the utility is again uh, a rather a bit difficult as compared to the simple curb scoring or i'll be talking another simple tool for use in our part this uh, american thoracic society criteria for diagnosing or defining severe community card pneumonia is based on ma major and minor criteria so you have to have either two major criteria one of the two major criteria either your patient with pneumonia is in shock or is in respiratory failure or impending respiratory failure that's only one of them is okay but out of the minor criteria you have to have three of these and this uh, one major or three minor of the listed uh, say characteristics makes a diagnosis of severe community acquired pneumonia the next is after you have made a decision that the patient has pneumonia and patient has pneumonia of minor moderate or severe intensity and you have decided the care either as an outpatient or to be admitted or the patient goes to the intensive care then is what is causing it majority of severe anemia uh, the community acquired pneumonia still is uh, streptococcal pneumonia uh, the next on the list is uh, methicillin uh, this uh, pseudomonas and 14% of uh, this methicillin resistance or mrsa i'll be talking at the casual pathogen the common one are strep pneumonia and dyrobacteriaceae mycoplasma and then of there are principal uh, say culprits in community acquired pneumonia but viral infections influenza rhinovirus sars cov2 they also come as pneumonia and as a community acquired pneumonia and of course uh, sars cov2 vaccination the mass scale which had uh, taken place during the covid has probably given us some protection against that but that does not mean that it it, it is gone or it is not be to be considered another issue in lower and uh, middle income countries is that we still have a lot of tb and uh, tb either as a on top of an underlying infection or as a still a primary cause has to be distinguished in a patient with who are either non responded to your common treatment or who are presenting as a seer right and add to it of course uh, this uh, is frequent cause of community admin in high burden settings in particularly in uh, children in uh, south asia where we are living and in south uh, sub saharan africa and finally in sub saharan africa most of them fall in the low and middle income countries this uh, hiv remains an issue as a complicating factor or as having some atypical organism being responsible for causing the pneumonia there is an acronym by the name of pes and pes stands for uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa extended spectrum beta lactamase enterobacteria c and methicillin resistant staph aureus and this is as i said the majority of the pneumonia still is streptococcal pneumonia you right but these three to four organisms make it uh, more likely that this uh, group of uh, pathogen will be responsible for severe community acquired pneumonia requiring care this uh, are some predictions which you can make on that these are the type of people th th this they constitute a population which are at high risk of developing or having severe community acquired pneumonia whether those who have been recently hospitalized those who have been nursing home residents or whole patient on hemodialysis those who are admitted in icu or history of prior antibiotic use in previous 90 days these these populations are more at risk of developing a severe form of community acquired pneumonia so having said that 
that you have a common pathogens, gram strain pe pata chal jayenge. We still have to rule out tuberculosis in our population. We do have to consider viral etiology of pneumonias, influenza and all that. And we have to have uh, just again looking after that the patient may not have uh, harboring this uh, HIV. So sputum gram stain, blood culture, urine uh, test for pneumococcal allergenella stains uh, on admission would be our uh, uh, sputum uh, gram, uh, this uh, A AFB staining or uh, ZN staining probably would not give the answer. Gene expert is an easier tool, readily available, and of course would be helpful in excluding, not only excluding uh, this uh, tuberculosis, but also probably telling us about the uh, say, uh, refampicin resistance and drug resistance. So in low and middle country with high prevalence burden of uh, this HIV, other molecular tools may have to be applied to make a diagnosis. Diagnostic testing, uh, this multiplex nasopharyngeal swab, it is available in Pakistan, costs around 3,000 rupees. Nasal swab, Lajistra like said, we were doing it for COVID and it picks up three organisms. It picks up simultaneously influenza A, B, SARS, COVID, and it's a good tool uh, for an initial assessment on patient with uh, severe pneumonias or uh, presenting in, uh, say, ER rooms. Molecular PCR platforms, of course, uh, they, they mentioned in the Western literature, are expensive, not readily available for with us. The rapid performance uh, PCR platforms shorten the time period because time is critical because these patients may have uh, 48 hours to 72 hours to probably make a quick decision about the right antibiotic and whether they need to be uh, ventilated or whether they need to be put on high flow oxygen or not. There are some biomarkers which help you to differentiate between bacterial or viral and procalcitonin is again very readily available and it totally guides us about uh, that the infection is bacterial, but it also help us for how long we have to use the antibiotic because a serial at procalcitonin level will help in deciding that we, if it is falling, we can stop the antibiotic at five days, and if it's not, we may have to continue further. So initial procalcitonin level on admission can be helpful in deciding site of care and, of course, uh, need of intensive care unit. Uh, similarly, CRP, uh, cut off value of funded as a 91% of uh, specificity in predicting the patient having pneumonia. Next come this pharmacological treatment of severe community acquired pneumonias. How it is different in lower and middle income countries? In our poor settings, one, the basic resuscitation is often difficult. Oxygen provision at all levels, at the community level, on a smaller hospital or basic health unit is lacking. There is low, avail low availability of uh, ventilators. There is increased antibiotic resistance with limited development of new drugs. And of course, given the link between the cardiovascular morbidity, mortality, and pneumonia, the overall mortality combined together escalates. The step, as we said, is the most common cause. There, is, uh, there are documents uh, or data suggesting that uh, there is reduced in vitro susceptibility to both beta lactams as well as macrolides, and it's much more common in our part of the world. Klebsiella is a common cause of severe bacteremia. Mycoplasma pneumonia has high prevalence in, in our part of the world. Legionella is relatively less common as mentioned in the Vestal literature. So when you come on the treatment, rapid administration of empiric antibiotic combination has been shown to decrease the mortality. We have to cover the common pathogens as we already shown. Antibiotic coverage should also cover gram negative. We are talking of a severe community acquired pneumonia, not a pneumonia uh, mild to moderate, which was uh, decided to be mentioned, uh, say managed as an outpatient or right. We are talking of a severe community acquired pneumonia. Criteria humne kya tha, ke patient aapka ya to shock mein hai, ya impending respiratory failure mein hai, aur saath pneumonia confirmed hai. Bacteriology ka bhi you are waiting for. And in that case, the coverage has to be broader one to cover all these things. 
and for COPD patient, of course, the E. coli should also be covered. So we have to start with a combination of beta-lactam antibiotics like cefotaxime and macrolides as compared to beta-lactam monotherapy, which definitely this combination therapy improves the outcome. Levofloxacin monotherapy is also encouraged in the severe settings if the combination therapy cannot be tolerated. Another recommended regime is combination therapy with either cefotaxime, pendarapinam, ampicillin, selbactam combined uh, with uh, either azithromycin or levofloxacin. The duration of treatment, as I said, procalcitonin level would help you in deciding whether you have to continue antibiotic of beyond five days or it has to be uh, revised. The treatment can be extended if patient dwells. Influenza remains a say, culprit in patient with pneumonias and whether it is an influenza or viral pneumonia or further complication. So some authorities do suggest that adding ostelmavir or xenomavir may also reduce or decrease the mortality till you have availability of this and particularly in area where influenza is more common and is more prevalent. A beta macrolide macrolide combination may lead to better outcomes. The benefit of macrolides may not be related only to their antibacterial effect, but more to their anti-inflammatory effect. So whether your patient shows hyper well, this, uh, sensitivity to macrolide or not, still their use is recommended. This is, as I said, the, the initial tool we mentioned about the pneumonia severity index was a rather difficult and difficult to have all those tests done. So if your patient is less than 40 or 40 to 65, you score accordingly on, if score is less than one, you just use the empiric therapy. If it is high risk, you decide on to take the patient to ICU and select as antibiotic as we mentioned. Non-flow, uh, non-invasive, this is another tool of oxygen helmet. So this is another tool, high flow oxygen administration definitely improves the mortality. Uh, steroids, we are quite fond of using steroids. The only two indication of pneumonia, if your patient is presenting with pneumonia and septic shock, their use is recommended. And of course, it has to be given for 48 to 70, uh, 24 to 48 hours. There are some new drugs coming in pipeline, lefulamide, deluxafen, Amidacycline, we have problem, but of course it would take, reaching the lower and middle income countries, it may take another decade and when they come out, they may not be, they may be out of pocket uh, range uh, from our part. Uh, and vaccination, of course, remains uh, a, say good, uh, particularly in the high risk populations that they should be vaccinated so they don't get uh, this severe form pneumonia. This, uh, in summary, there is a lack of high quality randomized control trials in low, low and middle income countries to determine the optimal antibiotic therapy. So we remain on to the uh, probably say combination therapy. Observational studies support the use of combination and major therapy with the beta lactam and macrolide. In uh, our part of the world, inclusion of macrolide antibiotic has been observed to help in atypical pneumonia, severe pneumococcal pneumonia, that is that macrolide resistant pathogen still through their anti-inflammatory effect. The role of adjunct immunotherapy remains undefined. So there is dire need for improved therapies as an outcome of severe pneumonia. In last decade, mortality has not, as I have shown, not have made much difference uh, in particularly the adult population. These are few of the references from where this uh, the presentation has been made. And then, so this is, the, these are the pillars. So for pneumonia, you have a thorough microbiology. You have to assess the severity, select an antibiotic. Be best choice would be beta-lactam plus macrolide or beta-lactam plus quinolone. And of course, duration of therapy has to be minimum of five days. And depending upon uh, procalcitonin level, it may be extended up to. And of course, the majority of these patients may require an assisted ventilatory support, high oxygen therapy, and all that. So that's all what I have to say about the challenges for managing, say, this uh, 
Swear Community Card Pneumonias in our part of the world. Thank you. Thank you for the patience.